Dr. Justin Marcajani, welcome back to the show. I have Dr. Jeff Fisher here on today's podcast. I found Dr. Jeff because I see lots of patients all over the world, functional medicine-wise, and a lot have chronic pain. And a lot of that pain can be disc degeneration, disc bulging, disc herniation. And Dr. Fisher has some excellent advice and excellent products to kind of interventions to help work get to the root cause of some of these solutions. So we're going to have a topic. We're going to have a conversation on this topic and really dive in and look at all the different options. Dr. Jeff, welcome to the show. How are you doing today? Great. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Excellent. And we'll put links down below to some of the things we're talking about, Dr. Jeff's uh, websites, his practice, and, and to, to get some of the traction support as well. So how did you come into this space? Obviously, you're a chiropractor. We talked pre-show that you've been doing this for over 30 years, but how did you get specifically into the distraction space? Did you see a gap in conventional chiropractic and you were trying to fill that need? How did that happen? So it's kind of a, a sad story for me, but a great story for my patients. Yeah. Um, I, was, I was a horribly slow uh, football player. Um, I was a slow-moving target on the football field back in my day. So I've had uh, uh, a couple of disc herniations in my neck. I'm not even sure you can see my, my scar here. I've had uh, uh, an anterior disectomy with fusion. So I've got the little titanium plate and the four screws. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. At, uh, at, uh, at C5 and C6. And um, I also had a, 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 a disc removal uh, with a SED procedure um, where they went, they went in with a probe stuck it in, went all the way out the back of my disc and they sucked out material at, at, at C, C5, C6, and then C6, C7 is where I had my fusion. So I, I was in incredible agony and I have the large uh, uh, decompression tables in my office, but obviously I couldn't bring those home with me at night when I couldn't sleep. I could barely eat. I was in an incredible amount of pain. So I just started experimenting with myself and rigging up different apparatuses on our railing, on our stairs up, up upstairs, and I had this aha moment, like the the mother or father of invention is necessity, and right. I started to create my own home traction unit, and uh, I, I I I just said, wow, you know, I really got something here. Um, as a matter of fact, I, I was in so much pain I couldn't sleep, and one night when I had built this prototype, um, I slept. I was out cold and my wife came up and she looked at me. She's like, Oh my God, he's snoring. So she just laid a blanket over me and left me there for about three or four hours. Wow. I, I woke up, I woke up and I was like, Jesus, I actually slept. I got, you know, I got something here. Uh, so then I, I, I brought that into my practice and I started to experiment with my patients. And uh, over the years I developed different prototypes that, that just became more and more successful, easier and easier for me to use and my, and my patients to use. And finally we evolved into my Fisher traction. And uh, I have, you know, primarily we had a, a, a cervical unit, but then my wife had a large disc herniation in her low back. It was like contagious in our family, these disc herniations. And uh, uh, so I built one for my wife and she got incredible results. Uh, we actually had before during and after MRIs on her lumbar spine. And we could see the reduction of her lumbar uh, uh, disc herniation from seven millimeters to five millimeters to three millimeters in a relatively short period of time. So at, at that point, I thought, wow, you know what? There, there, there's so much you know, clinical value and therapeutic value to this that um, you know, I, I got to do something with it. So, Very cool. uh, you know, we, we ended up uh, uh, building and creating my Fisher Traction, what it is today. Okay. <clears throat> Very cool. So we're kind of talking more today about disc bulging, herniation. Um, that disc is essentially popping out. It's either hitting typically that intervertebral foramen where those nerves are going out. And so conventional chiropractic where we're adjusting, we're moving the bones, making sure we have movement in the spine, we're addressing subluxations. Why isn't that not enough sometimes to address these disc issues? Well, you know, the, the, the discs are, 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 are they're, they're complex in some ways, but, but they're actually very simple in others. You know, our discs, uh, the center of our discs, uh, the nucleus functions on its hydrostatic pressure. And because of gravity, 
always pushing down, there's that, that, that creation of the pressure pushing out. And with our adjustments, you know, obviously we're working on uh, enhancing the motion at the facet joint level and we are affecting the disc, but, but when you reverse that pull of gravity on the spine and you elongate it and you stretch it out, then you can create an, a negative intradiscal pressure that actually sucks the disc back in and, and, and you can suck the herniation of the bulge back in uh, uh, through the annular fibers, which, you know, we can't, we can't quite do with an adjustment by itself, but, you know, traction and adjustments, you know, especially in my practice, we do both. We don't do just one or the other. We do both. And you can get incredible success when you combine both of those treatments together. Um, uh, it's, 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 it's a super fortunate situation for a lot of people with disc issues that you know when you combine chiropractic and traction together you can just get amazing results right so with chiropractic we're, we're getting good movements good alignment within mm -hmm. that that spine everything's moving better better alignment especially if you have upper cervical issues you're probably applying some level of exercise right i, I imagine really working on extension muscles postural muscles probably just that upper cross or lower cross syndrome issue with the tight hip flexors or the deep cervical flexors, what kind of postural awareness or exercises do you kind of build in to your program when you're addressing disc issues? So how I allude to this in, in my practice, cause I'm a corrective care chiropractor. So I'm working mm -hmm. at restoring normal curves. So if you, I tell my patients this, if you think of me, I'm like an orthodontist putting braces on your teeth. So my job is to try and get your spine straight or restore the normal curves in your neck. So I'm like putting braces on your teeth. I've got, you know, physical therapy and traction, which is like brushing and flossing. But mm -hmm. at the end, we use Pilates, which is like the mm -hmm. retainer. So we're helping to strengthen those core muscles. That's and good. Stabilizing, you know, the muscles that, that support and control the spine so that they're not 100% reliant solely upon adjustments their entire lives. Right. They're doing both. They're working on the outer part while I work on the inner part. If there was just one exercise for like lower back disc or um, cervical disc, is there one thing that you could think of or one kind of movement pattern that would be essential in kind of your program? Well, I, I would say, you know, extension exercises are hugely important. Uh -huh. Like what you, what you touched on is upper cross syndrome. You yeah. know, now, now in, in, in the tech world, it's called tech neck. Um, yeah. you know, people are on the computers or on their smartphones. So uh, uh, we have that tendency to lose the normal curve. Matter of fact, I, you know, when you're a chiropractor, you always have different uh, uh, examples. You know, I'm not sure. Can, can you see yeah. this? Okay. Yeah, that's great. So, so, you know, when you have tech neck, you know, this is the tendency of yeah. the spine to move forward, which is the opposite of what God intended our neck to be, which is back more in extension, where that's, yeah. that represents more of a natural curve. There should be a and C curve there, that C should be there. Absolutely, absolutely. So when you work on these extensor muscles to strengthen and condition them, uh, to make sure that they're constantly trying to pull the neck back into its more normal curve they're essential and this you know this is obviously is you know the head up here here's the occiput and here's the cervical spine but this also applies the lumbar spine too you know they're, they're very similar curves in the lumbar spine i think it's anywhere between 20 and 40 degrees is is the natural lordosis that we're supposed to have and in the cervical spine this natural low dose is supposed to be more towards about 30 degrees. So when, anything that you can do to help strengthen condition and enhance those, those curves going backwards is super, super important. That's good. So what kind of an exercise would you recommend out of the gate, like a prone Cobra or like something like a wall lean where you're tucking that chin in any, any specific one exercise you can think of that kind of sticks out. So, so we call them supermans. Oh yeah. Have you ever heard of that? But but yeah, so but, you come like on a Swiss ball sometimes, or on a yoga mat, kind of. Yeah, or just yeah, you lay you lay flat on the ground, and you, and you're you're just trying to 
you know, extend your, your yeah. body back, contracting those muscles in the, in, in the head and neck and, and also a lumbar spine. <clears throat> Got it. So you're putting yourself in that really good extension with your back and extension with your neck. And where does soft tissue come into this? Do you ever do like active release technique or Graston or any soft tissue to kind of get some of these muscles that may not be, that may be inhibited and you're trying to facilitate them working again? Yeah. So what we do in my practice is we do a lot of neuromuscular re-education mm -hmm. and there, there's some incredible techniques that we use for our deep tissue uh, therapists where they're working on relaxing the trigger points, relaxing the muscles. And typically what we do in my office is I have all my patients get that deep tissue neuromuscular re-education work done first before I adjust them. So it's like, it's like marinating them before I go in and I, you know, give them a good strong adjustment to restore that. Got it. Yeah. <laughs> That's very good. That's excellent. All right, so I want to just put up some visuals here just for some of the listeners. I think it may be helpful if you're listening to this on podcast. We'll put the YouTube links below so you guys can see. Mm -hmm. This video was good. This was the one that I think you showed what an actual disc herniation looks like. I'm going to just play it here for the, for the listeners. and Just so we have a visual here. So we have the nerve right here, and then here's the disc. And essentially over time, that disc is shortening, and then we have a little bulge irritating that nerve right there. So just kind of bringing it down here, this is a really good picture. Can you explain what's happening here when you're doing traction and what's how that's working? So what's happening is uh, uh, I've got I got a couple of my units here. I'm going to use this one because you might be able to see it a little bit better. But uh, what, what my invention, what I actually created is is a new form of traction, and the actual engine or the mechanism of pull is these little discs here with these latex bungees in the middle. And uh, over our studies, we calculated uh, the amount of strength, the tensile elastic pull strength of the bungees, where you see I'm, I'm pulling them apart. And this is our cervical unit. And the cervical unit uh, can apply a maximum of 50 pounds of pull force, which supposedly that's about the maximum a human neck can handle. Although we've we've experimented on patients with with even a, a, a larger magnitude of pull force, and they've been able to handle like big guys can handle a lot more. But but that pulling, you know, like this, it, it's pulling in the opposite direction of what gravity does. And the great thing about these latex. Uh, bungees is that they have very similar characteristics to our muscles in that like when you're on a big table and your neck's getting stretched your body might fight with it uh, and, and there's not any sensory to relax the traction so your muscles can relax but these bungees what they'll do is just naturally they'll relax if your muscles pull and as your muscles relax it pulls more uh, which is very a, good. They, they actually act like kind of in a symbiotic relationship. Um, this is our, our standard uh, low back unit. And this guy, I, uh, I can, <laughs> I'm pulling as hard as I can. That thing's got like about 100 pounds of pull force. Um, That's very cool. When I saw these devices, a couple of things, because I've been recommending various devices. It's usually the, the lower cost ones tend to be more gravity based whether it's right. like a, a kneeling inversion or inversion boots. Obviously, those tend to have problems where it's just going to be a pain in the butt to get into those. And if you're really hot with your disc being inflamed, it can be a mm -hmm. little difficult. And so, and then my concern with a lot of them was when I saw your device, there was an aha moment because what I really was needing for my patients was this ability to decompress and then relax, decompress yeah. and relax. Think of that as you get a rag, you fill it up with water, you wring it out, and then you have the absorption to clean up the mess. And then you, you rinse it with water again, and then you rinse it out again. That's how your disc works. It's like a sponge. Now, the yeah. problem is, I'll just for the listeners, over time, the discs tend to shorten a little bit. Cartilage tends to get weaker. And essentially, your disc gets hydrated with imbibition. That's essentially the pumping of that, that disc. And that movement of putting the pressure on, letting it pull, right? Expand the disc, create the negative pressure, suck it in, and then relax. That, for me, created that aha moment. That's the imbibition that that disc needed to kind of rehydrate and heal. Can you comment a little more on that? 
Yeah, that's the, really the critical component to decompression. Decompression by itself is the desired outcome. And, and one of my proprietary components, um, I'm not sure if that's in reverse there, but it says yep. release strap. So yep. the release strap is, is engaged by the user to go through these periodic resting phases. And if you think of the center of the disc, like, like the substance that's in baby diapers, where, yep. where the, the proteoglycans, they yep. can absorb, you know, like 500 times their weight in water. But that exactly. resting phase is critically important because once you draw the water, when it sucks in, it needs to get absorbed in the matrix of those proteoglycans. And, and that resting phase allows that. So you're literally, you're rehydrating the discs. You're giving the discs life. <clears throat> totally. That makes sense. And I didn't, I haven't seen a lot of other devices on the market that provide that pumping action, unless you're going into that, you know, unless you, you know, they have the ones over the top with the weights or the blood pressure cup, but it involves, a, it's kind of a pain in the butt to kind of off, on, off, on. Is there any other competitors even close that has that release action? Well, they, they can't <laughs> because yeah. I, have, I have a United States utility patent. So I invented a new form of traction. So uh, it's kind of funny. As a matter of fact, we, we were on Amazon and um, we've taken down about 40 competitors that tried to uh, uh, steal my idea. Um, so there, no one else can actually design or make a, a traction unit like mine because I invented a new form of traction. It's mine. It's my baby. So and it's, it's yeah. cost effective too. So that's yeah. great. And this, this is kind of what's happening at the lumbar here, right? This is yeah. pulling this apart. This is essentially pulling the hips down. You're anchored up here. So it's creating that disc base versus mm -hmm. having to do traction or having to move your body and then you can release it here. Do you have a good image on the website for the cervical spine? Um, I, I do. I do. If, if you, well, actually, you know what? So you want to hear a funny story? We just sold out. Right there, there it is right there. If you click on that, you should probably see it. But we literally just sold out of our cervical units. Wow, it, it, that's crazy. Yeah, yeah. It's, a, it's a positive problem. <laughs> yeah, that's a good problem. That's a quality yeah. problem. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, that's cool. All right, anything else? I mean, with the cervical spine, obviously similar situation, right? We're just we're just grabbing, you know, the uh, everything from the, the neck up versus mm -hmm. you're grabbing it from the hips down. Where's that image that I just had? Let's see here. Where'd it go? I'll try to pull it back up here. There was a good image of what was happening there. You know, while you're looking for it, another really important part about how my traction unit is different from most yes. others is that, that those studies have been shown that if your spine is in extension in its more natural curve during traction, you get better results. So that's another reason why mine is supine. So when you lay down, uh, your neck still maintains that natural curve. And what I did was I right designed here. it at a, an appropriate length. So it maintains that 30 degree angle of pull force, which enables you to reach over the, the, the a larger number of disc spaces in the spine. Um, mm. if, it's, if it's too flat, then you're only uh, affecting the upper cervicals. And if it's too far forward, uh, where your neck is an extension, uh, one, that causes damage to the discs, but two, then you're only reaching the lower vertebrae. But when you allow it to be in a 30 degree angle, you can, you can reach over almost the entire cervical spine all at once. So Got it. This angle that, right here. Exactly. Exactly. And then typically this is anchored over going to be like a door jam typically. Yeah. Yeah. You just, Both you the upper. Up, yeah. Hook it on a doorknob and just you, you lay down. It's really super easy to use. That's cool. That's excellent. Very good. So outside of that, um, what else would you want to highlight with your program? So like, this is going to be a part of a program. What else do you see like nutritionally diet wise, um, helping to move the needle, whether it's reducing inflammation, kind of a whole foods, kind of paleo template, certain food allergens, what kind of supplements as well would you want to add in to kind of help reconstitute that disc tissue? Well, you know, one of the most simple is water. Yep. Water, 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 water. Yep. And, 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 and so many of us, you know, like I, 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 I drink, I drink my coffee, you know, like everybody else does. Um, but, but I, myself, I'm kind of like our, 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 our test tube 
uh, where I test things out on myself first before I implement my practice. But I've been consciously drinking more water um, over the last year. And I, I honestly, I virtually only drink water. I drink my coffee and I just drink water. That's it. And I can yep. tell myself that, you know, that's helped in the inflammatory effects because I still run, I still work out and my knee problems are gone. My, my feet, my ankles, uh, uh, you know, along with, I take glucosamine with chondroitin, MSM, um, and, uh, uh, you know, nutrition is a huge, huge, you know, part of our health. And, you know, unfortunately we don't always get that in our diets. So uh, if you're not taking any vitamins, you should take at least a multivitamin to start. Right. But, but sure. there's so many, as you know, like in functional medicine, there is such an incredible depth of nutrition that can be evaluated properly and you can add it into your life. And it, honest to God, nutrition can totally change your life. It really, really can. Yeah. So if you're <laughs> hydrating, good, clean, filtered water, mineral water, you're not, uh, you're not obviously doing a lot of the high fructose corn syrup junk gets inflaming your body. What about for like tissue? Like what about collagen peptides or chondroitin or any, any building block stuff? Like what's your experience with that? So, you know, that, that's a great question because we, we actually just started looking into that um, because, you know, as the, the discs themselves, here's my little, my little baby here. The outer fibers of our discs are made of type one collagen right. and just a little bit deeper, they're type two collagen. So, you know, <laughs> my, my, my wife is much smarter than I am. So she takes all these incredible uh, uh, supplements, but she's been taking collagen and she notices a difference in her skin, yeah, well, everything. Yeah. And, and, and I, you know, honestly, I, I, that's not my area of expertise per se. Um, you know more about that than I do, mm -hmm. but, but, but I think, you know, if collagen is able to maintain its same, you know, com, you know, compounds, even if it, as it gets digested and you have extra collagen in your body, then it can replace maybe old collagen. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, that's like a no brainer to me. Yeah. I think yeah, that I mean, if you can yeah. pump that in, you, you pump in the good and you pump out the old. And your body stays healthier, stays younger. Yeah, yeah. I mean, your your body tends to know where to lay down these uh, these amino acids and proteins just by lifting weights. Your body creates a little inflammation in the bicep by doing curls, and you're going to reconstitute protein there. So I imagine that same kind of response in that disc tissue is going to trigger some of that building block. And if we're eating junky food or not digesting and absorbing a lot of nutrients, then that collagen will be helpful. Um, anything else that you would like? Let's say someone's really hot, really inflamed. Would you ever add in something like prolotherapy or um, PRP, platelet-rich plasma, or stem cell injections. What's your experience using an injectable in that area to kind of work alongside it? So, you know, that, that, that's, that's actually a great question. Um, I'm not sure if you're familiar with this, what's happened with stem cell therapy most recently. You know, the FDA has stopped mm -hmm. us from being able to use that, but we used to do stem cell injections in my office and they were incredible. Oh, really? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Incredibly successful, but now uh, uh, they've put a limitation on it because most stem cell injections are mixed. It's a mixture, and once yeah. you start once you start mixing things, you're creating new drugs. So of course, FDA shut that down. Um, right. So so we've had to discontinue that in our office, but it was incredibly successful. So there's something there. There's definitely something there. Yeah, I always tell patients too. Even if you were to do an injectable, whether it's PRP or stem cell or prolotherapy, it's still not the root cause. It may be accelerating the healing of that tissue, but you still have to fix right. the underlying mechanism of why that got beaten down. And you still yeah. want to bring that disc back in so that annular fibrosis, that outer ring can heal. Because if that pulposis is still pushing through that ring, it's just not going to heal. It's like ripping a scab off all the time, right? It, it, exactly. Exactly. And you know, again, that gets back to the rehydration, mm -hmm. uh, you know, that disc lives on the hydrostatic pressure. So the greater the hydrostatic pressure inside the disc is so incredibly important. And I, I'm not sure if you're aware of this. I, this is something I just learned because I, I, I do all my, my continuing education courses every year. I always, I'm always looking for disc related material. And I, 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 I came across this just most recently that we have these nerves that go into the disc. They surround the disc and they go into oh. the disc. Okay, and I can't remember what the name of the what the nerves are, but the hydrostatic pressure 
prevents those nerves from getting deeper into the disc. And now they're talking about discogenic pain. So the deeper those nerves are able to penetrate in, they'll collide with a, an acid that uh, uh, our nucleus has, and it causes pain. So as a disc dehydrates and loses its water, those nerves can grow further in, and then you have more pain. So maintaining that health of that nucleus by increasing that hydrostatic pressure by decompressing prevents those nerves from getting in, which prevents pain. So it's hugely, hugely important. So essentially, you know, that herniation, that video we showed where that disc kind of comes out, hits that IVF, um, the intervertebral foramen, those those spinal nerves coming out. It's not just that. It could not even be hitting that. Just there's little nerves around the actual disc. Just a little bit of pressure on that could be sending a signal, a pain signal, essentially. A hundred percent. hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. Now, what about disc herniations into the spinal canal? I think most disc herniations are going to be more IVF just based on the, the anterior to posterior nature of that where the spinal yeah. canal is more anterior. How often do you see spinal um, spinal canal herniations? And would this type of traction still help that? It, they, they would. And, and, and you know, uh, I mean, you, you know this. One of the reasons why, because we have a, you know, all the way in the very back of our, of our spine, we have the uh, posterior longitudinal ligament, which is like, like a thick piece of leather that goes yeah. all the way down our spine. And that prevents that, that direct posterior disc herniation. But I, I do a, a, a fair amount of injury cases, car accidents, where when, when instability, where the bones are able to move forward and backward beyond their normal range of motion, yeah. that can cause a little bit of elasticity or, 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 or loosening of that posterior longitudinal ligament, where it actually allows a posterior disc herniation to go backwards towards the uh, uh, spinal canal. And, and um, it doesn't happen that often, but it just depends on the magnitude of injury uh, and force. But when, when there's instability going forward and backwards, which you can see on flexion extension films, um, then you have to look for that also, which, you know, an MRI, of course, could show you that. <clears throat> but, but you but, find you still are able to recover patients like that? Yeah, we are. You know, there's such an incredible power to to traction, and it's so simple. But the key is 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 really the frequency and the consistency of use. Yeah. You know, like what we stress, <clears throat> what we found is that if you can use it for 21 consecutive days, 21 days, it, you know, use it before you go to bed or when you wake up in the morning, whatever's most convenient for you. But you know, if after 21 days. You know, most of our patients are a lot better. If you're not, then you better go check in with an orthopedist because you might be a surgical candidate. Yeah. And at what point do you need surgery? What are the signs or symptoms? Um, what percent of people do you think you're able to save from getting surgery? Do you think 90, 95% you can avoid? And, and what symptoms do you have to look for when you're like, okay, yeah, you really need surgery. And then maybe we work on this later. So like for me, I'm a perfect example. Uh, um, I, I had an enormous disc herniation in my neck and I was starting to get atrophy of my left tricep mm -hmm. and part of my pec. So if, if you're getting atrophy of muscles, you need to consult with a surgeon because that can be a permanent issue. Um, mm -hmm. But again, if you have numbness and tingling, if, you're, if your reflexes or sensation are affected when you go in to see you know, any healthcare provider and they evaluate you, and if those things are progressive, they're getting worse, or they just will not go away with any type of conservative treatment. Um, even traction as well. Even traction. I mean, I, yeah. I, I wish we could help everybody. We can't. But you know, our success rates are, are over 80%. Yeah. And most studies show that about 80% of people that, uh, that take on traction, they get better. But there is, you know, I, mean, I don't know the exact percentage of people that are just, you know, always going to be surgical candidates or not. But, you know, in my office, I have a great relationship with the orthopedist who actually did my surgery. So he's incredibly conservative. He knows all about chiropractic traction, everything. If I get a, a, a really difficult case where my patient's just not progressing, I'll send him over to Nitin Bhatia and he'll look at him. And, and many times he goes, you know what, go back to Fisher, 
keep doing it. Let's give it another month. Or let's give it another yeah. month after that. See how much you can retract that disc back in. And if you're seeing, yeah. Yeah. seeing improvement. And, and imagine some people, they probably still feel a little bit better on the traction if they have a disc issue. So if you see a little bit of improvement and you can inch away at that, like 21 days, you said, then you can probably get some momentum, I would assume. Exactly. And that's the key. It's getting that therapeutic momentum of treatment over and over and over on a consistent basis. Um, and, and you can draw it back. Any other natural anti-inflammatories you would add in? I imagine just getting to the root cause, you're going to be avoiding lots of these dangerous opiate medications that conventional medicine is finally getting keen on and their addictive nature, not really fixing anything. They're just blocking perception of pain. But any other natural anti-inflammatories you'd want to add in or you see to be successful with your patients with disc issues? Um, you know, I, I, I don't know. Because, <laughs> mm -hmm. I, I, you know, I, I'm, I'm like a mechanic, mm -hmm. you know. I'm, I'm restoring uh, uh, the, the motion and position of the spine. And mm -hmm. I, I, I tend to refer out, you know, there, mm -hmm. there's a, a, a big functional medicine uh, uh, facility that's close by us. And um, I, I, I let those experts do what they do. I mean, you, you, you might know better than I do. I mean, what, what do you use? Is there anything? Yeah, good question. I, I mean, I, I think out of the gate, you know, higher dose fish oil can be excellent. Mm. I think different herbs like frankincense or boswelli or even some mm. topical CBD can be great. I, I even find um, systemic enzymes taken away from food. Mm. Um, systemic mm. enzymes that have like um, serpeptidase, they, they kind of get into the bloodstream and they start breaking up scar tissue. They break up inflammatory cytokines and interleukins mm. and they can help um, provide more pliability to that tissue. So mm. those are just a couple of things out of the gates I think can be helpful. Awesome. Well, you know what? Yeah. We need to collaborate then. Yeah, that's, that's great. <laughs> that's great. And then can you work with patients that have gone the conventional medicine route? Let's say they, they went in and they got a cortisone injection. Okay, the pain's better, doc. Can, I, can you still work with those patients while that cortisone takes six months to wear off? A absolutely. We do that all the time. And um, how do you find their limitations? Because now they don't have pain telling them, oh, don't do this. How do you get them to um, be on top of their limitations when they really can't perceive pain? Well, you know, I, I x-ray everybody. Mm -hmm. I, I do. And unless somebody has films that are, you know, less than six months old, yeah. I, I x-ray everybody. So I look at them from a structural uh, standpoint where if I'm looking and seeing that they have subluxations, they have yeah. a loss of curve or scoliosis or whatever it is, I stay focused on that and I get them focused on that because even if the pain is not there, their spine is not at their optimum level. So we're always concentrated on the restoration of normal curves. So it helps the patient to get more focused on, hey, if you want to prevent this from coming back, you want to stay healthy, we have to get that curve back to normal. Very good. Excellent, Doc. Well, any other last clinical pearls you want to leave us with your 30 plus years of practice? Uh, well, I'd say, you know, uh, I, I tell my patients this all the time. Motion is life and life is motion. So if you are constantly working towards the restoration of normal motion, your maximum motion, you're going to live a better life, a healthier life. You're going to be able to experience all the things that you want to do, uh, vacations, grandchildren, whatever it might be. So motion is so key. So whatever you can do to help increase your, your ranges of motion and your functionality, your body, you got to do it. You got to invest the time and effort. Excellent. We'll put links down below, guys, to access some of uh, Dr. Fisher's patented technology, fishertraction.com. We'll put links below in the comments. And also, Doc sees patients in person over in Irvine, California, fishercharopracticinc.com. We'll put both links if you're in the California area and you want to get support. He's there for you as well. Anything else, Doc, you want to leave the listeners with? Any other coordinations or social media stuff you want to highlight? Well, you know, uh, uh, we, we actually were coming out with our new boxed units of my Fisher Traction. Um, we, we, we've got a deal going on right now. You've probably heard of uh, uh, Meyer DC. Uh, mm -hmm. They're you know, one of the largest uh, uh, yep. durable medical device. So we've got a big deal going on with them. So, so we're trying to reach out more to practitioners uh, like yourself that where patients need it, you're going to be able to purchase it and have it in your clinics uh, uh, readily, readily available. Um, so patients can try it right away. We're going to do some training videos on, on how you guys can implement it, um, in practices and, and help your patients with it. So, uh, 
you know, we're, we go to fishertraction.com. We're always trying to update things. And, you know, I have my YouTube channel where I've got, I don't even know, over a hundred videos on chiropractic, on traction, on, you know, virtually anything for, for health. So uh, it's kind of an exciting journey. <laughs> That's very good. We'll put links below. We talked about a promo code. Maybe DRJ will work. We'll put it in the description below. We can get that set up after. All right, yeah. Doc. Well, thanks so much. Uh, amazing chatting with you. Appreciate the information. And let's talk again soon. You take care. All right, brother. Take care. Thanks. Thank you.